Okay, we're going to be talking about concept one, which is enzymes and biochemical reactions for the honors students. So when we talk about biochemical reactions, we're just talking about chemical reactions that are happening in living things. So let's remind ourselves what a chemical reaction is, although you should have learned this in physical science last year. Chemical reaction is the breaking and creating of bonds between different substances, and this requires energy. And the energy it requires is activation energy. It's the amount of energy needed to make a chemical reaction start. What we have done here is an energy diagram of a chemical reaction. On the x-axis, it shows reaction progress, or it may show time, so what's happening over time. And then it shows amount of energy on the y-axis. So what this is showing is we're starting with a certain amount of energy, that energy is being raised, and then we're ending with a different amount of energy. So this right here is the activation energy. That's the amount of energy that has to be inputted in order to get this whole thing going. When I think of this, I think about um, a chemical reaction being like rolling a ball down a hill. If I want to roll a ball down a hill, I have to input a certain amount of energy. I have to roll the ball up the hill, put in this activation energy in order to get the reaction started of the ball rolling down. So that's your chemical reaction, that's your activation energy. We're going to talk more about this diagram in the next few slides. So chemical reactions have reactants and products. Reactants are also known as substrates. So if I use one of these words, know that they're used interchangeably. And these are the substances that are being changed during a chemical reaction. They're like the ingredients. That's what you start with. So in an energy diagram, the reactant energy is what we see over here on the left side. Whereas products are the substances that are being made by the chemical reactions. So that's what we see over here at the end. So if we're looking at reaction progress again, we're going to start with reactants or substrate. We're always going to end with products. There's two types of chemical reactions. In general, they all reactions either absorb or release energy. Endothermic reactions absorb energy. So you know they may absorb and release, but overall they're absorbing more energy than they are releasing. So that's what we see over here. This is an endothermic reaction. An example of a real biochemical reaction that's endothermic is photosynthesis. Sunlight energy is taken in, it's absorbed and stored in chemical energy in the form of glucose. So in this endothermic reaction, my reactants are over here. This is my activation energy. And then this is the product. So we can see we end with more than we start. So that shows it's endothermic because we absorbed energy in order to end up with more. Exothermic means a reaction releases energy. This is like cellular respiration where we break down food to release energy for our body to use. Again, this is reactants. This is what we start with. Down here is products. This is what we're ending with. And notice we have less energy in the products because it was released in this type of reaction. All right, so these two biochemical reactions, we're going to talk about so much this unit. But just for this unit, all you need to do is be able to recognize them is photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So photosynthesis is six carbon dioxides plus six waters. Those are your reactants. Are going to produce or make glucose, which is C6H12O6, and six oxygen molecules. And this is endothermic because we're storing energy in the sugar. It's absorbing from the sun. We're storing it in the sugar. This is cellular respiration. It's glucose plus six oxygens makes six carbon dioxide and six water. So here's my reactants, here's my products. Energy is released as ATP is um, being given off, as the sugar is broken down. So therefore, it's an exothermic reaction. So as we break down sugar, ATP is being released. And so that's it's exothermic. All right, let's talk about what enzymes have to do with chemical reactions. Enzymes are a type of protein, yay, one of our macromolecules. And they speed up biochemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. So they make it take less energy to get the reaction started. And that's why the reaction can happen faster. Because they speed up reactions, they're all called catalysts. So catalysts are things that speed up reactions. Enzymes are specifically proteins that are catalysts. They're very, very specialized molecules. They bind to very specific reactants or substrate, and from there they break or form bonds in the chemical reaction, and then they will release a newly created product. But the enzyme itself is not changed in the reaction, so it can be used over and over and over again. Enzymes are often related to a lock and a key. 
it's because they are very specific. All right, let's say this is an enzyme. They have an active site that only fits one substrate. So the active site is just kind of like the grooves in the enzyme where the substrate's going to bond. So there's a substrate fit into it perfectly. And not all substrates could bond to this active site on this enzyme. So that's why they're very specific. And that's why we refer to it as a lock and a key model. And if this active site gets messed up, then the enzyme can't bind to the substrate and it won't be able to do what it's supposed to do. All right, so let's look at an example of this in a reaction. So sometimes enzymes assist in breaking bonds. So if we look at this picture, we have our enzyme. There's one substrate. Here some bonds are being broken, and here at the end, notice the enzyme's unchanged, but two products are being released. Whereas enzymes can also assist in making bonds. So here we got our enzyme with two substrates. Bonds are forming here, and we're releasing one product. Now again, the shape of that active site on the enzyme is very important, and if it denaturation occurs, that's not good. That's when the enzyme's active site gets deformed and it loses its specific shape, which would cause it to lose its biological activity. It would no longer be able to do what it was designed to do. Denaturation is caused by extreme changes in environment, whether that's pH or temperature, ion strength, or solubility. So just something's changing the environment and the enzyme isn't able to remain in the shape it should be. Sometimes enzymes can be renatured, so kind of restored back to their original shape, but not always and honestly not usually. So here's a normal enzyme and there's a denatured enzyme. So that's just kind of showing you, if we go back to this picture, it has to be a triangle shape in order to fit this substrate. So this enzyme would not be able to bond to that substrate and thus it wouldn't be able to do what it was designed to do. Now there's a lot of ways we can affect the rate of a chemical reaction, but we're going to specifically talk about five. First is temperature. We talked about this last year um, in physical science too, so hopefully this is familiar. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in an object. So, as we increase temperature, we're increasing the rate of the reaction because we're increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. Thus, they're going to be colliding more because they're moving faster. And so the reaction can happen faster. A pH is a measure of how acidic a solution is. And most enzymes work in very specific pHs or pH ranges. So if that pH changes, that can affect the speed of the reaction. It can speed up the reaction, it can slow it down, or it can make the reaction not happen at all if the enzyme can't function within the new pH. Substrate concentration is just saying, you know, the more substrate, the more reactant, the more ingredient we have, the faster the reaction can occur because there's going to be more particle collisions, and that makes reactions happen faster. Catalysts, again, Something that speeds up a reaction by lowering the activation energy. Enzymes are catalysts. They're just specifically proteins that are catalysts. And then last but not least is a competitive inhibitor. They slow down reactions by competing with the substrate for the active site on the enzyme. So they're kind of fighting for it, which is causing the substrate to not be able to bind to the active site on the enzyme like it should, and that'll slow down the reaction. And we're going to look at three of these factors in a little lab we're going to do together. But that is your Concept 1 notes for your honors class.